The Turks and Caicos Islands in the British West Indies are home to many unique features that account for several indigenous plants and animals throughout the region. Ocean biologist Mark Parrish is an expert on the Turks and Caicos Islands and served as my guide on an eco-tour of the region. Our first stop was the uninhabited Little Water Key. Uh, this island that we're on today is part of the Princess Alexandra Nature Reserve and is actually an iguana sanctuary. The iguanas have a uh, free run of this island. They're very much protected around these islands. Uh, you won't find them on the islands that are populated due to predation by cats and dogs uh, and even humans. Little Water Key here in the British West Indies has become a popular tourist spot. Better known as Iguana Island, it's a great place to get up close and personal with the Turks and Caicos rock iguana. <laughs> now what's special about these iguanas is that they're the rock iguana, which is quite indigenous to these islands. And no one's really quite sure how they got here, but it's thought uh, primarily they arrived by, by raft, by floating on dead trees or debris across the oceans, probably from the southern Caribbean. And no doubt they've been isolated here for quite some time. Uh, because this particular species is unique to these islands. And the further north you go into the main Bahamian islands, uh, the iguanas are completely different. Okay, look at this. Now this is a good example of a bit of iguana dung. Uh, it's perfectly unsmelly, which is nice. It's made up of mostly leaves and whatever else they eat. So as we break it apart, we can really see what they are eating here. Uh, i got some quite large leaves here. The odd seed in here as well. This is quite interesting and important to find because uh, you can really tell what part of what role the iguanas are playing on this island. For example, if they were to eat a berry um, and ingest the berry, the seed's going to come out in its dung. It might eat a berry from over here, put the dung over there, and that way has uh, propagated that, that seed to another part of the island and maybe that seed will germinate and grow into a plant over there. Another indigenous creature native to Little Water Key is the pond-dwelling mangrove upside-down jellyfish. The mangrove upside-down jellyfish spends most of his life upside-down. Now this is a good example of a classic symbiotic relationship between the animal jellyfish and a type of algae known as zooanthellae that lives in the tentacles of the jellyfish. Hence the need for the jellyfish to be upside-down so that the algae can get all the sunlight it needs for photosynthesis and a very successful relationship. The relationship between the rock iguana and the developing Turks and Caicos Island region is also moving towards a more symbiotic future. Really up until the early 1990s, the future of the Turks and Caicos rock iguana was really quite uncertain. Uh, it was coming under a lot of threat from uh, increased development, increased tourism, there was a lot of competition for, for land use. Um, a lot of the iguanas uh, have since been thoroughly studied by the National Trust and they've even, even relocated uh, iguanas from islands that are earmarked for development. And in, and in this way, they've been able to uh, learn more about the iguana and set up special status for the iguana. So really now they're very highly protected. And it looks like sanctuaries such as the Little Water Key here is really going to um, thrive into the future. And it looks like the iguana is here to stay.